In autonomous vehicles, the key perception technologies that play the roles of eyes and optic nerves are inertial sensors, radar sensors, camera sensors, LiDAR sensors, ultrasonic sensors, GPS, V2X, sensor fusion, HD mapping, and localization. Autonomous vehicles should provide passengers with a comfortable riding experience and deliver various content with focused attention. Therefore, electric vehicles, which have low noise and vibration levels, are considered suitable. The first attempt in history to develop a self-driving car is attributed to Leonardo da Vinci's design of a self-propelled cart in the year 1478. Hello everyone! In this session, we will briefly explore the field of autonomous driving engineering through a book review titled, Autonomous Driving, Automotive Engineering. The author, Dr. Jung Sung Wan, holds a Ph.D. in electrical engineering from Hanyang University. He has served as a lead researcher in the autonomous driving division of Hyundai Motors Research and Development Center. Currently, he is a professor in the Department of Future Automobile Engineering at the Korea Polytechnics. An autonomous vehicle, also known as an autonomous car or self-driving car, refers to a vehicle that operates on its own to perform the three stages of operation, perception, decision-making, and control, without requiring active human intervention or separate driving actions. In this context, perception refers to the process where the vehicle identifies various moving objects like other cars, pedestrians, bicycles, etc., as well as stationary objects like lanes and traffic signals, all centered around the car itself. Decision, on the other hand, involves assessing diverse driving situations to decide on a driving strategy and create the most optimal route. This step takes into account factors such as traffic conditions, potential obstacles, and safety considerations. Control, pertains to the precise control of parameters like acceleration, deceleration, steering angle, and steering torque. These control actions are executed with utmost precision based on the characteristics of the vehicle's powertrain, braking, and steering systems. Autonomous driving technology, in conjunction with the aforementioned three-stage process, is divided into six levels based on whether the system or the human handles emergency situations. This categorization is defined by SAEJ 3016, Society of Automotive Engineers Standard for Autonomous Driving Technology. Levels 0 to 2 of autonomous driving involve partial system autonomy while the driver retains control over the perception, decision-making, and control three-stage process in all driving conditions. Levels 3 to 5 of autonomous driving entail the autonomous system performing the entire process of control and perception, rendering driver intervention unnecessary. Autonomous driving encompasses both longitudinal control systems, such as smart cruise control, SCC, and lateral control systems, like autonomous emergency braking, AEB. Additionally, there are lateral control systems such as Lane Keeping Assist System, LKAS. Starting from Level 3 of Autonomous Driving, the Responsibility for Object and Event Detection and Response, ODER, which involves perceiving and reacting to objects and accident situations, shifts to the system. As a result, the role of the system becomes more prominent in all driving conditions during autonomous operation. As mentioned earlier, autonomous vehicles utilize 10 perception technologies. In this book, each of these technologies is employed to explain the principles and formulas for measuring various metrics. However, I'll omit those details here. Firstly, the inertial measurement unit, IMU, is positioned at the vehicle's center of gravity. It measures the acceleration and angular velocity, rotational force, generated within the vehicle. Utilizing MEMS, Microelectromechanical System Technology, the collected data is uploaded to the vehicle's network. The IMU sensor can measure physical quantities that change over time, such as acceleration and angular velocity. However, it has limitations in measuring speed and angles directly. While it's possible to integrate the rate of change to convert them into speed and angles, this approach may not guarantee precision. 
The radar, radio detection and ranging, sensor utilizes frequency to measure the distance, direction, angle, and speed of reflected objects. Radar technology draws inspiration from how bats navigate in the dark without colliding with walls. It consists of a transmitting antenna, power amplifier, receiving antenna, low noise amplifier, and AD converter, among other components. Radar sensors are categorized into two main types. Pulse Doppler Radar and FMCW, Frequency Modulated Continuous Wave Radar. Pulse Doppler Radar operates by measuring the time it takes for signals transmitted from the antenna to bounce off objects and return. This information helps determine the distance to the target. Additionally, it detects the Doppler shift in the reflected signals, allowing the radar to calculate the speed of the target. On the other hand, FMCW radar operates by continuously emitting a signal with a modulated frequency. This frequency changes linearly over time. When the signal is reflected off an object, the radar analyzes both the time it took for the reflected signal to arrive and the deviation in frequency. These factors combined enable the radar to calculate the distance to the object. The frequencies used in radar sensors have evolved over time starting from 24 GHz initially and progressing to as high as 77 GHz. To put this into perspective, the predominant frequency for current 5G mobile communication is around 3.5 GHz. Radar sensors operate with high-frequency microwave signals, which grant them the advantage of being minimally affected by factors like morning and evening lighting changes or adverse weather conditions such as rain, snow, and fog. However, these sensors face limitations when it comes to non-metallic or small objects. They struggle to detect non-metallic reflecting surfaces in small objects. Unlike camera sensors, they can't provide image data, which prevents them from recognizing pedestrians, lane markings, traffic signals, and similar elements. Furthermore, as the frequency increases, radar sensors tend to consume more power, presenting a drawback in terms of energy efficiency. Camera sensors are widely used in various applications such as rear-view cameras in vehicles and dash cams, making them quite familiar to us. These sensors excel at distinguishing shapes, colors, and surface textures. Unlike radar and LiDAR sensors, cameras have the unique ability to perceive object shapes and features. While radar and LiDAR can provide highly detailed distance measurements, they struggle to capture the precise shape and appearance of objects. Camera sensors excel at differentiating colors, which is particularly useful in autonomous driving scenarios. They can distinguish between yellow center lines, blue bus lanes, and yellow safety zones. Moreover, they can identify emergency vehicles like fire trucks, ambulances, and police cars appearing in the rear view, allowing the vehicle to change lanes automatically. Camera sensors are well suited for machine learning and deep learning applications. However, they do have limitations. They struggle in dark nighttime conditions, situations with strong backlighting, and adverse weather conditions like rain, dust, and snow. LiDAR sensors, short for light detection and ranging, operate by emitting laser pulses that bounce off objects and return. By measuring the time it takes for the pulse to return, they detect the distance, direction, and speed of objects. With the capability to exchange millions of laser beams per second, LiDAR sensors process signals rapidly, ensuring precise and high-resolution data. However, their relatively high cost remains a drawback despite their accuracy and speed. Rotating LiDAR sensors are mounted on the vehicle's roof and provide a 360-degree view, enabling the detection of objects, their distances, and directions. On the other hand, Fixed LiDAR sensors scan within a 30-degree vertical range using 16 channels with a 2-degree resolution. These sensors analyze the power density of laser beams reflected and received from objects. Similar to camera sensors, they create color-enhanced 3D images. However, they have a vulnerability to factors like fog, rain, snow, and dust that can cause laser beam diffraction waves encountering obstacles and changing direction. Despite their strengths in generating detailed 3D images, 
This sensitivity to atmospheric conditions is a limitation of LiDAR sensors. Ultrasonic sensors operate within a frequency range higher than the audible spectrum of 20 to 20,000 Hz that humans can hear. The frequencies commonly used in cars range from 40,000 to 50,000 Hz. These sensors are typically installed on the front and rear bumpers of vehicles and are employed to detect obstacles like walls and barriers in parking spaces. They are also capable of detecting pedestrians and animals appearing in the front and rear of the vehicle. The ultrasonic sensor has somewhat complex terminology and descriptions. Ultrasonic sensors come in two main forms. Ones that utilize the piezoelectric effect and those that employ the capacitance effect. The piezoelectric effect refers to the change in polarization that occurs in a material when pressure is applied to it, while the capacitance effect involves the accumulation of charge between two electrodes, resulting in a voltage difference. In the automotive industry, the method that employs piezoelectric components is more widely used. When pressure is exerted on materials like piezoelectric ceramics such as lead zirconate titanate, PZT, or barium titanate, BATIO-3. Internal polarization and surface charges are generated within the material. The ultrasonic sensor measures distance using the time interval between transmitted ultrasonic waves hitting an object and their reflected return. The speed of sound for these waves is 343.2 meters per second. Regardless of transparent objects, reflective surfaces, or small objects, it provides relatively high accuracy in measuring distances. It's cost-effective, immune to variations in lighting conditions both day and night, and performs well in challenging environments like dust and fog. However, it faces difficulties in measuring during high-speed driving and has a limited detection range of within 15 meters. Unlike other sensors, it's most influenced by changes in air temperature. The speed of sound for ultrasonic waves decreases by 0.17% with each degree Celsius change in air temperature. GPS, which stands for Global Positioning System, utilizes a constellation of 24 satellites orbiting the Earth at an altitude of approximately 22,000 kilometers. This system was developed by the United States in the 1970s primarily for military purposes. The satellites are arranged in six orbits, with four satellites in each orbit. By transmitting signals, these satellites allow GPS receivers on the ground to determine the user's position and velocity information. Each of the six orbits covers a specific geographical region, and depending on the user's location, signals from at least five to more than eight satellites are used to provide accurate positioning information. GPS, except for unusual factors like solar flares, is relatively unaffected by weather and environmental conditions such as time, making it usable worldwide and free of charge. Through differential GPS, DGPS, precise positioning accuracy of 1 to 2 centimeters can be achieved. However, it is susceptible to interference from other radio signals and lacks reception in scenarios like tunnels, underground passages, underground parking lots, and areas between tall buildings. To address this, inertial measurement units, IMIS, can be used to supplement missing GPS satellite signals by providing heading angles and acceleration information. Vehicle to Everything V2X technology connects the internal network and communication system of autonomous vehicles with mobile objects, infrastructure, wireless networks, and cloud communication networks to facilitate the exchange of essential information for safe operations. For example, V2X can overcome challenges on curved roads, roads with faded lane markings, severe weather conditions, or situations where physical sensors might be obstructed. In urban road scenarios where two-wheelers and diverse types of pedestrians coexist, V2X technology becomes crucial for achieving full autonomy as it allows for overcoming obstacles and enhancing overall safety. V2X technology is categorized into three main types. V2V, vehicle to vehicle, V2P, vehicle to pedestrian, and V2I, vehicle to infrastructure. Recent advancements have seen the integration of V2X technology with GPS and ultra-wideband. UWB technology. 
This integration is being researched to enable autonomous driving in communication shadow zones and sensor blind spots, thereby enhancing the capabilities of autonomous vehicles even in challenging scenarios. V2V Vehicle to vehicle technology involves short range communication between vehicles to exchange information. This technology enables predictive control for scenarios such as collision avoidance at intersections, abrupt stops of leading vehicles on uphill drives, deceleration due to following large vehicles obstructing the view, and other sudden situations. V2P Vehicle to pedestrian technology enables autonomous driving control in scenarios where pedestrians are not detectable by sensors due to buildings or road structures at intersections. It also enhances safety by allowing the vehicle to detect sudden appearances of pedestrians, such as children unexpectedly emerging between parked cars or obstructed by taller vehicles. V2I Vehicle to infrastructure technology involves the exchange of information between vehicles and roadside units, RSUs. A prominent example of an RSU is a traffic signal. Autonomous vehicles can anticipate future states of traffic signals by accessing information such as signal IDs, locations, and color change timings. This information can then be utilized to enhance autonomous driving control strategies. While camera sensors can be used to recognize the color of traffic signals, they have limitations in predicting signal changes since they can only detect the color after it has changed. Additionally, camera sensors have lower distance resolution and an effective sensing range of less than 100 meters, which limits their application in active control systems for autonomous vehicles. For electric vehicles, technologies like V2H, vehicle to home, and V2B, vehicle to building, can be utilized. These technologies enable electric vehicles to supply excess energy back to the household power grid or be used in emergency situations. Additionally, they open up possibilities for new business models, such as selling surplus energy generated by the vehicle back to the grid or using the vehicle as a power source for buildings. V2N Vehicle to Network is a technology that enables information exchange between vehicles and mobile devices. This technology allows for features like pedestrian protection and vehicle status monitoring through integration with navigation systems. V2C Vehicle to Cloud allows for the updating of autonomous driving software and facilitates the sharing of personal information, medical services, financial services, and infotainment data through cloud servers. This enables easy access to news, music, movies, and more. V2X technologies provide a much broader sensing range compared to the process of object perception and judgment using vehicle sensors alone. However, challenges such as high infrastructure installation and operating costs, legal frameworks for standardization, and user paid data expenses need to be addressed. Sensor fusion is the technology of integrating the output values of sensors installed in a vehicle. Radars, LIDARs, cameras, ultrasonic sensors, and others each have their strengths and weaknesses. Hence, the process of combining these sensors is crucial to enhance perception accuracy under various conditions. By optimizing the sensor combination and strategically placing them, it's possible to minimize blind spots where sensors cannot detect and reduce the chances of false alarms, achieving a better overall detection performance. However, sensor fusion itself requires multiple homogeneous or heterogeneous sensors, which can lead to redundancy and potentially increase costs. Additionally, the complexity of signal processing operations can also rise. There's also a limitation in terms of potentially compromising vehicle design due to the integration of these sensors. Now let's talk about HD maps. Maps used for autonomous driving are divided into two categories. ADOS, Advanced Driver Assistance Systems maps that are suitable for autonomous driving levels 1 and 2, and HD, High Definition maps used for levels 3 to 5. They provide detailed information such as lane markings, traffic signs, traffic signals, weather and traffic conditions, road surface conditions, construction information, and more. Using HD maps, it's possible to leverage 3D data about the road, surrounding environment, 
and object information within an accuracy range of 0.1 to 0.2 meters. This allows for a reduction in sensor dependency and lowers the computational load of autonomous driving programs. However, the process of generating this information requires a significant amount of time and resources, and maintaining the precision of these maps can also be costly. Additionally, for vehicles exported to foreign markets, there is a challenge of acquiring precise map data tailored to the local environment. Localization is the technology used in autonomous vehicles to determine their current position in a 3D space. The vehicle's current position is established by fusing signals from various sensors, including GPS, IMU, and others, through a process known as sensor fusion. This information can then be overlaid onto an HD map. Various mathematical methods are employed for these calculations, including Bayesian filters, Kalman filters, particle filters, and more. However, a detailed explanation of these methods will be omitted here. We will conclude here for now. In the next episode, we will delve into decision-making and control technologies, which serve as the brain of autonomous vehicles. Thank you for tuning in so far.